Hi, my groupmates and I will be performing data analysis on Yelp reviews. My name is Jason, and I will be starting off explaining our analysis. Our dataset was obtained from the Yelp dataset challenge webpage. There are billions of reviews available on Yelp, and it is unfeasible to read them one by one to gain insights of a business. Therefore, we wanted to use uh, NLP and sentiment analysis techniques to infer meaning and gain insights on businesses, as well as giving recommendation of business based on reviews. The dataset we use are attributes contained in the business JSON file, the review JSON file, and the user JSON file. We will be mainly focusing on the reviews and star ratings for our analysis. The first thing we do is to perform EDA and initial data pre-processing step on our data. We identify the distribution of reviews across different locations as well as business categories. Eventually, we decided to uh, settle on performing arts businesses in Las Vegas, which gives us a sizable data set for the analysis. We join the data set across business, review, and user JSON file, and we check missing values. We rename column attributes, and we also drop the ones that we don't need. Eventually, we export it into a CSV file, and further pre-processing steps are done across different analysis. So I'm mainly in charge of the LDA and LSA analysis. For LDA, I pre-process and clean the data set to remove stop words, punctuations, lemmatize the words, and create a doctor matrix. Then I use Gensim to create the LDA model, which provides me the top 50 topics and term weights. I then use uh, Pi LDA a viz library to visualize the frequency of terms across different topics as well as the 30 most important terms. This gives me insight on the terms users generally review on. I then compared analysis from LDA with LSA. Using similar pre-processing and cleaning steps, I convert the reviews into a text doc and then use the TF IDF vectorizers to transform the text into a doc term matrix. I then convert them into vectors using truncated SVD. I can then pick out the top 50 important terms, each containing 10 most important terms in the topics. I further analyze the reviews into a uh, low and high rating. This shows me the important topics that are generally negatively mentioned, as well as the one positively mentioned. LSA and LDA generate similar results, and the conclusion of the analysis can be found in the report. Following LDA and LSA, we performed sentiment analysis on our dataset. In part one of the sentiment analysis exploration, we wanted to explore how the body of a text in a Yelp review and Yelp ratings are related. Essentially, we wanted to know if we could determine sentiment from text and compare it to ratings. We will investigate how an existing sentiment analysis package like TextBob can work with our Yelp review text. In part two, we wanted to explore model building and sentiment analysis. Essentially, we wanted to say, can a sentiment model built in on an entirely different data set still work with our Yelp data? We trained a model on the IMDB movie review data set and then extrapolated that data set to our own Yelp reviews and determined whether or not the sentiment uh, was appropriate for the Yelp reviews in our data set. This is our table of contents. Uh, let's jump right into it. So in part one, we got our data. Um, from there, we extracted only the text and the star ratings, as you can see here. Uh, we added in a column for whether or not it was a high or a low score, which we determined high scores were fours and fives, and lows were one, twos, and threes. You can see here uh, that the high class has more uh, values in it than the low class, but for our purposes, that's not important. Uh, we clean the text, uh, getting rid of special characters, making it all lowercase so it would run more effectively in our analysis. 
then in the text blob package, essentially running this package can give a sentiment score between minus one and positive one. The more negative, the greater probability that the sentiment was poor in that text. The more positive, the more likely that is a good sentiment. Uh, looking at our data, you can see the text blog package is not perfect at analyzing the sentiment in these phrases, um, but perhaps on average it is effective, and we found that to be true. Uh, here is for uh, high, uh, highly rated um, reviews. You can say I'm speechless, and the text blog sentiment is one, or absolutely awesome show, also a one. So it's very positive. Uh, the show got canceled and was horrible. That's a minus one. Worst show ever, also a minus one. So it is working. Um, if we look at a word cloud of the lowly rated, we see words um, like worst and bad, but also some words that don't make sense, like perfect. Um, for the highly rated, we see wonderful, and absolutely awesome, speechless. Uh, so we can tell that the sentiment um, is in fact related to these words um, that occur frequently in uh, these high and low ratings. Essentially, there is a difference between high rating and low rating based on the frequency of words that are positive or negative. Uh, here we show the sentiment uh, against the star ratings, and we can tell that there is a relationship between them. They are moderately to lowly correlated, and those correlations are uh, shown here. In part two, we trained our model to analyze the sentiment on the Yelp reviews. Essentially, we used uh, what we found in the literature to be one of the most effective models for analyzing this uh, corpus of text. Um, that model is shown below. It's a sequential dense multilayer uh, neural network um, using uh, different activations um, that are shown to be most effective. Essentially, this model, once we trained it, we got the following training and validation accuracies across our epochs. And we can see that in this particular run, we had 86.9% accuracy, and that is the accuracy of um, predicting for this uh, IMDb movie review set. So then we decided, OK, now that we have a model for um, analyzing sentiment, let's see if we can create a function that will accept text and output a sentiment score based on this model so that we can apply it to our own Vegas data set. And we did just that below. Back to this same um, data frame here, you can see that the IMDB model sentiment scores um, were very positive for reviews that were in fact highly rated. When we visualize the model sentiment scores against ratings, we can see a good split um, showing a strong difference between highly rated and lowly rated uh, reviews and their corresponding model sentiment. Uh, it's an even stronger relationship when we look at the high-low. The correlations are 0.65 and 0.6 respectively for the review stars and high-low. Uh, finally, we display here some text so this is a review, I'm speechless, can't describe how wonderful it is, et cetera. The analyzer function uh, does give a positive rating to that. And the same works for a negative um, review. It does in fact give a very low, close to zero score. So essentially in this model, a zero is the most negative you can be and a one is the most positive you can be. Um, finally, just on a quick check, we ran a logistic regression model um, and essentially the goal was to see if we could predict high 
um, or low um, ratings based on this model and based on sentiment. Only using the IMDb sentiment, we were able to get approximately point or approximately 84% accuracy. Uh, if we run the function now on something that has a negative sentiment, like this class is the worst, we get at a close to zero score. If we run it for I love this class, we get a score close to one. Thank you. Hello, this is my Jupyter Notebook um, for a recommender system based on collaborative filtering that I built for the Yelp data set for users and businesses in the Las Vegas area with a minimum of 10 reviews. Um, here is the uh, basic data set that I will be using when I run through the recommendation that I built. Um, at the end of the day, it ends up being 251 users and 277 different businesses. Um, after a good bit of uh, pre-processing and analyzing the data, I start by building an SVD algorithm um, to try and reduce the dimensionality of the data. Um, and what I discover is that I can reduce it down to 50 actual concepts, so into a um, feature space of 50. Um, I take that 50 and use SVD to run a predicted recommendation for a specific user. Um, in this case, um, the user that I'm starting with is user 55, and I'm gonna ask for the top five recommendations for this user. Um, the output shows me these are the um, businesses that the user has already been to, and keep in mind this is Las Vegas, so it could be casinos, um, shows, shopping malls, tourist attractions, but for this user, what he's primarily interested in is American Western cuisine restaurants, and the output actually aligns with that for the most part. From there, I actually examined um, more algorithms, including SVD, but also other um, recommendation system algorithms to try and find the best one for, for the recommendation approach. Um, when I run that analysis, what I end up finding is the SVDPP is the best algorithm for um, producing a recommendation system on the data set. So I take that SVDPP same user and run a prediction and find that for user 55, it predicts a modern Japanese restaurant. So still in the same category foods, but not in the same type of food. Um, so I take the SVDPP and run a grid-based parameter tuning um, approach to try and find the best uh, parameter within the model to further adjust and make it more powerful. And what I basically find is the ideal parameters or the ideal values across each of these three parameters are right here. And so when I build an additional SVDPP model with the new parameters input, on user 55, the recommendation I get now is for Yardbird, Southern Table, and Bar with a predictive rating of 4.61. So this is the ideal recommended model, the SVDPP um, with the uh, tune parameters, um, given the fact that it actually lines up pretty well with the taste of that specific user.